What's going on everyone? I'm back here with another video and today I'm going to be taking a look at the iStat menu for Mac OS. So yeah, let's go ahead and get started. Essentially what this program and or application does is it a system-wide monitoring software and it basically lets you monitor almost every aspect of your system. Uh, so it does come with its own application icon when you install it. Um, and there two, are two ways to install this program. Uh, first one being you can download it through the App Store over here. The second way and the way that I recommend doing it is actually going to the iStat menu website and purchasing it directly from there. Uh, because buying the website version, uh, you're getting the full version. Whereas if you download it and buy it from the Mac App Store, um, you're getting a bit of a watered down version. And there are some features that you don't get, unfortunately, uh, through the App Store version. So um, I will provide a link in the description uh, to link you guys directly to that where you can buy it if you are interested. Anyway, so opening it up here, uh, the icon looks like this and it says iStat menus. So if we open it up, you can see we have a wide range of controls and options we can choose from. <clears throat> so on the top here, we have global, uh, and then we have notifications, weather, CPU and GPU, memory, disks, network, sensors, battery, slash power, time, and combined. So Starting with global, first thing you can do is click this little pause icon to pause the monitoring of the application if you don't want it monitoring for a particular moment. And then within that same menu, you have a few basic options. You can change the menu bar color. So you can see up here on the top, um, the icon is changing color. So it's purple, orange, uh, yellow, green, and whatnot. My favorite is blue. It just kind of blends in nicely. And then you have menu bar borders. So you can change if there are, you want solid borders or complete transparent borders, which is pretty cool. Uh, then we have drop down color, which basically change the color of the drop down window here. So as you can see, currently I have it set to be a transparent dark color to kind of match and blend in with the uh, dark mode on the Mac OS Mojave. You could also go to a solid dark color. So if we click that, you can now see it is a solid, uh, kind of a dark gray. Then you have a transparent clear, and then it goes to that. And then we have solid white, such as that. Again, my favorite is transparent black. Then we have style, light, and dark menu bar mode separately. So effectively, you can click that and change all of the menu bar icons individually, which is cool but my preference is just to leave that off. And then you have update frequency, so you can do very slow, slow, medium, and fast. Um, I would recommend doing fast because if you do slow, uh, the update time or frequency for the menu bar icons will be not accurate to the current system state that your computer is in. So personally, I would recommend selecting the fast option. Um, anyway, moving down here, we have notifications. And effectively what this is, is it allows you to set certain notifications for certain items within the program. So currently I have an alert set for low battery uh, when the battery gets to 10%. Uh, you can change that to however you want. If you want to be notified when the battery hits 20%, set, let's say, uh, you can easily change that right in here. Uh, and then we have, I have another one for um, alerting me if the temperature of the CPU is over 185 degrees Fahrenheit for more than 10 seconds. Uh, and then active GPU has changed, so it'll effectively it'll let me know uh, when the GPU has changed from the integrated and the dedicated GPU. And then we have the GPU temperature letting me know, uh, alerting me when the temperature is at a certain degree, for, again, for more than 10 seconds. Uh, and then this plus button up here allows you to add a new alert or notification rather. And from this drop window, you could have a whole host of different options to choose from, ranging from anything from the CPU and GPU, uh, memory, disk, network, sensors. And then you have a whole wide range of different temperature sensors you can be alerted to. Uh, and then different battery alerts, uh, letting you know if the daylight savings has changed, and then different things uh, involving weather. So it can get really, really intricate and really customizable if you want it to be. 
which is super nice. Uh, and then to remove a notification, you just hit the little minus and it goes away. Uh, and then dropping down here, we have weather. Uh, this is a paid service. So this is not something that is free um, and it does not come with the application. Uh, you do, however, get a year worth of the subscription when you purchase um, the program for the first time. But effectively what this is, is it allows you to get information via weather or about weather in your current location through their kind of proprietary weather service. Uh, so you can do that and you can subscribe to it if you so choose. Uh, and then dropping down here, we have options for the CPU and GPU. So we have the menu bar customization. So up here you can change the menu bar icons. So currently I have it as a little bar graph thing for the CPU load. Uh, but you can change the icon depending on that. And same goes for the GPU. So you can actually add a GPU load as well uh, if you so choose. Then we have app usage format. You can change that from Unix style 0 to 1600 or 0 to 100. Uh, then we have processes to show. So you can do from a minimum of 3 all the way to a maximum of 15. And then you can hide or unhide hyper-threaded cores. Uh, so if your computer supports it, and if you want to see the hyper-threading cores, you can disable that. And you can see the menu bar up here just got significantly larger. So now it's showing all of the physical cores as well as all of the hyper-threading cores. But me personally, I like to have that turned off because I don't particularly need to see that. Uh, and then down here, we just have similar things for memory, changing the menu icon, things like that. And you can hide or unhide the inactive memory. Uh, disk uh, shows you various options for the disk. Again, pretty, pretty basic. Network, again, you have some very customizable options for the network. Um, again, with the menu bar. Uh, and then we have the format. You can have kilobits and or megabits per second um, and change the bit rate and whatever. Uh, and then all that good stuff. And then sensors. You can change your Fahrenheit from Celsius, Fahrenheit, or Kelvin. And then what's really cool is this has a fan control option. So if you hit edit fan control, you have options to create custom settings for your fans. So basically... When, let's say, for example, your computer reaches a certain temperature and you want the fans to kick into high immediately uh, or ramp up to the highest RPM possible, you can easily set that within here. And the program will automatically ramp up the fans to 100% when uh, the CPU and or GPU reaches a certain temperature. And effectively, it overrides the built-in temperature sensors uh, within macOS. So... It gives you full control over that, which is really, really nice. Uh, and then down here, we have battery and power. Um, change various things of battery. And it also allows you to view your uh, Bluetooth peripherals uh, within here uh, for the battery status. So if you have a Magic Mouse or AirPods or something connected via Bluetooth, uh, you can be able to see the battery level uh, within the menu bar if you have it set for that, which is really cool. And then we have time. I don't really use this very much because the built-in time on the menu bar is totally fine for me. Uh, and then down below that, we have combined, which effectively just allows you to combine all of the options above here kind of into one menu so you can see it all in one place. Anyway, so that's basically a quick rundown of the uh, settings and things within the menu. Uh, so if we close out of that, and if we go up to the status bar itself here now, so the things I currently have visible are the men or the RAM usage, uh, the CPU usage, and the temperature. So if we go into the RAM, you can see that there is a lot of different monitoring going on for the RAM. So you have uh, memory pressure, effectively seeing how much or how much pressure that is being put on the particular RAM or if it's being used very heavily, uh, that'll show here. And you can also get a really nice little kind of live graph of kind of what's going on at any given time. Um, then below here, we have the amount of RAM or memory that is used and or available. So you have the wired, active, compressed, and free, uh, so, which is really nice to see. 
And then processes, which is another nice thing to have. So you can see the various processes uh, and or different programs that are using your RAM. So if you have, for right now, actually Safari is using a very somewhat large amount of RAM at almost two gigabytes. Um, then we have the swap memory, which effectively means when the RAM is full, it'll start swapping out memory to the hard disk and or the disk drive. Uh, which is something you don't want to see because that means your system will slow down quite a lot. Uh, and then we have page ins and page outs. Uh, okay, then CPU, which is probably the most useful. Uh, up here you can see the amount of load that the CPU is currently under. So you get both a kind of a little spiking graph as well as a bar graph type thing next to that showing you all cores. Uh, on your machine. So this particular computer has an eight core processor, so it shows eight different threads and or cores uh, in this little section here, which is cool. And again, it gives you the bar graph to show, or not bar graph, the uh, little live graph to show you again how much load was put on the CPU at a given time. And you can change that between one hour, 24 hours, seven days, and 30 days to see, so you can go back a full month and see what kind of happened within that month and how much CPU usage your computer was using. And then below that, we can see the CPU frequency, which is another really nice thing to have. Um, so when under load, uh, you can see the gigahertz or the frequency go up or down depending on what it is you're doing. And you can also tell if your computer is thermal throttling from here, uh, which is really nice. And then it shows you the base uh, CPU temperature below that. And then again, the processes, what type of uh, which application is using the most CPU load. And then below that again, you have information on your GPU. So you can see how much video memory is being used as well as how heavily the processor on the GPU is being used. And you can see it's actually been used quite heavily in the past few hours. Uh, and then we show the frames per second. Uh, for any given time. So if you see I move my screen just a little bit as you can see there the frame rate jumped up to around 60 FPS and then when you're just sitting idle uh, the frame rate actually drops down to conserve battery life. And then we have the load average and the uptime of how long your computer has been awake and being used since the last time it was shut off. Okay uh, and then moving lastly going back up to the top actually uh, if we hover over this this is a cool thing as well. So this gives you a pretty detailed visual representation of each individual core on your computer. So you can see how much load each individual core is using or is being put under. So as we can see, core number one is usually the one that's being used most heavily on basic day-to-day -day tasks. But if you're using a program such as Final Cut Pro and you're exporting or rendering a video, you'll notice that all eight of these boxes will be lit up quite a lot, showing you that each uh, each one of the cores is being used. So that's really, really cool. And then again, it shows you the amount of threads and processes as well. Okay, lastly over here, moving on to the temperature sensors. Again, you have so many different temperature sensors that you can monitor. Um, I mean, you've got everything ranging from your Wi-Fi card all the way down to your palm rest. I mean, it's really, really intricate, um, which is really cool. And it sh if you hover over any of them, you can see, uh, again, detailed information of kind of what was happening at any given time. So you can see uh, what happened on, let's say the CPU. Uh, the CPU got relatively warm uh, at 533. Um, and if we go the past 24 hours, you see, Eight o'clock last night, it kind of peaked around 183 degrees. So yeah, it's pretty cool to be able to see a visual rep representation of kind of what's going on temperature wise. So again, you see everything and it even has individual temperatures for each individual CPU core on your computer, which is really, really cool. Uh, of course, in your GPU temperature, all that good stuff, and even an SSD temperature. So you can see how hot your D SSD is getting. Uh, and then we have uh, the fans. So you can check the RPM. Again, you can see the CPU and, and GPU frequencies. Uh, and then we have different voltage and wattage usage, which is another really cool thing. So you can see your the amount of wattage uh, that the 
uh, battery is currently outputting and then various things with the CPU. Uh, you can see how much wattage and or voltage any of those uh, components are using at any given time. Super neat. And then up here, this is again where the fan controls come into play. So you can have it set to automatic fan controls, system controls, which is effectively macOS controlling it. Uh, and then your customized manual settings. Uh, currently I have a medium setting and a high setting. And then you can also down here adjust each fan individually. So if you have two fans within your computer, uh, you can have one or the other uh, um, ramped up higher or lower. So if I wanted the left side to be RPM of the left side higher than the right, you could easily do that. Now, I don't really know why you'd want to do that particularly, um, but you can easily do it. Um, so if I click on this and hit high, you should be able to actually in the background of this video hear the fans ramp up. So let me go and click on that. There you go. You can see now the fans have kicked into high gear. And you could probably hear the fans actually in the background of the audio now. Um, and we can see now they're both running right around 6,000 RPM. Um, and this is super useful if you have a program that is really CPU intensive. And if your computer is thermal throttling, you can ramp up the fans manually to cool it off, which is really nice. So I'm going to go back to system control. And you can see instantly the fans kicked off, uh, which is really, really nice. Um, so that's basically, uh, the essentials of this program. Um, it is a really neat program. Um, I would very highly recommend downloading it and installing it because it, for power users, um, it is a really, really nice tool to have and to be able to keep tabs on what it is your system is doing. And if your computer is overheating, you'll be able to see that immediately and take action to it. But yeah. Uh, that is essentially it for this video. Uh, again, like I said, I will put a link in the description below uh, with the link to this program if you guys are interested in checking it out. Um, again, I would not recommend getting the App Store version because it is a watered-down version and just is not good, in my opinion. But anyway, hope you guys have enjoyed the video. Uh, make sure to hit that subscribe button, uh, hit the like button as well. It is much appreciated. And if you guys have any questions or comments about this or anything of such, just drop those in the comment section below and I'll make sure to get back to them as soon as I possibly can. And yeah, with that all being said, hope you guys have enjoyed and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace out.